Hey everybody, this is Faint, and uh, I got a new microphone, so I'm not sure how well it's going to sound, but I'll give it a try. <coughs> Wanted to uh, do a little uh, demo today to see how well, or poorly actually, I could um, pilot using, uh, using the uh, instruments only. Now, um, to do this, I created this mission where it's pretty foggy and rainy, and uh, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, in case you're wondering, I'm using Track IR. Uh, I'm also using a uh, mouse for um, moving the helicopter, and I have a throttle and joystick uh, for other moves with the helicopter. Uh, one of the things of, uh, that happens when you have track IR is uh, you're able to move around or look around the helicopter. But uh, if you lean forward or backward, you're also able to move around a little bit. So if you look over at your instruments and you can't see the tops of them, try just leaning back like that. I've also uh, changed how the um, field of view is uh, with one of the settings on my uh, throttle. I can uh, zoom in and out and uh, basically what I like is to have um, have it a little bit zoomed in so that uh, the dials are not stretched. So basically I'll just zoom it in until the dials are pretty round no matter how I look at them. pretty good. And it just makes it feel a little bit more realistic to me. Alright, here we go. I'm also using um, pedals uh, made by SciTech. Alright, so basically what I want to do is uh, go straight north um, to the 30th parallel and then um, go straight west along the 30th parallel until I get to the USS Nimitz. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm just going to use this um, to see if I see which parallel I'm at the uh, GPS. So first thing I need to do is to move till the aircraft is facing north. I'm using the uh, horizontal situation indicator with the yellow arrow to tell me that. And then I'm going to dip the nose and start moving, increasing my speed. Now, since I can still see the land, I'm going to uh, still keep my eyes up so that I don't run into any obstacles. But one of the uh, most important gauges I'm using is this gauge right here, the instantaneous vertical speed. This tells me whether I'm gaining or losing altitude or holding steady. Right above that is my altimeter. Right now it's saying I'm at uh, 300 feet, uh, or 71 meters up there. So, uh, I'm going to increase that a little bit so I don't run into the ground. Uh, one of the most important things, uh, in foggy weather that you want to do is keep an eye on your artificial horizon. Uh, because when it gets really foggy, and especially when you're over water, it's very easy to lose track of where you are uh, and it's very easy to flip the aircraft uh, when you start to correct. You'll see that once we get over the water. I'm going to turn a little bit to the right so that I'm 
facing north or traveling north. Checking outside the aircraft, it still looks like I have a pretty good um, pretty good altitude for the trip. And my speed is slowing down a little bit, so I'm just going to increase speed by dipping the nose a little bit more. Try and keep it around uh, 100 knots. Now one of the things about using a mouse for moving around is that if you dip the nose and then don't move the mouse, the nose will slowly creep up, up, rack up, which is fairly annoying. Uh, to get around that, you can use a, a joystick and dip the nose that way, and you can just hold it there, and the nose won't dip back up and you won't slow down. Altitude still looks pretty good at 700 feet or 180 meters above ground level. And feet wet. Now that we are over the water, you can see it's very foggy, very difficult to tell where you are. You can look up and see that there's clouds up there, but if you are looking around like this, it's very, very difficult to see where you are. So again, I'm going to keep my eyes on the instantaneous vertical speed uh, meter to make sure that I don't lose any altitude. Looks like I've drifted off uh, slightly uh, northeast, so I'm just going to tip a little bit and slowly make it back, uh, make make it back towards the northern heading. As north approaches, I'm just going to slowly tip back nice and level, so I don't overshoot north. Passing the 27th uh, parallel. Speed looks good. Altitude looks good. I'm not gaining or losing any altitude. Still heading north, straight and level. It's important to keep an eye on these gauges. Uh, if you take your eyes off the gauges and start to look around, it's very easy to become disoriented. Here comes a 30 foot parallel, so I'm going to tip the aircraft into a bank. I'm going to keep my eyes on the instantaneous vertical speed. I want to make sure that I don't uh, drop the aircraft. I'm also trying to keep the nose approximately in the same position along the artificial horizon. Now I've overshot the 30th parallel, so I'm going to go a little slightly south, slightly southwest, level out, and then tip back to the right so that I can pick up, ooh, I'm starting to lose altitude, so I'm going to pick the nose back up. I dipped the nose a little bit and I lost altitude, but I, and I gained a lot of speed. Uh, I'm kind of zigzagging past the 30th, across the 30th parallel. So I'm going to see if I can concentrate here and uh, get back on course. Right now I'm using the joystick to move around and I'm not touching the throttle at all. It's pretty 
good. Altitude still looks good, about 800 meters, or 800 feet. Speed's at 120 knots. Heading pretty much directly west. I could tip a little bit to the right. Make it a little slightly northwest. Watch that instantaneous vertical speed start to dip a little bit. Uh, as I get closer to the destination, I'll see a couple of markers that I've uh, placed on the map to show that I'm show that I'm lining up with the uh, carrier. That's my co-pilot uh, indicating that he has uh, seen some contacts out ahead. I don't know how he can see that, I can't see anything. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt. So there's the first marker. When I reach that I'll go eyes up to see if I can see anything. go, first marker reached, and I can't see anything. And my altitude is pretty high, so I'm going to drop down to around, uh, oh, I don't know, 100 meters. And I'm going to start to slow down. So I'm uh, dropping the throttle and raising the nose at the same time. And I'll lose speed pretty quickly doing that. Level out, and straight ahead there is the carrier. So now that I have eyes on the carrier, I can uh, just go uh, just use my uh, Mark 1 eyeballs. Proper uh, landing technique on a carrier is to uh, hover, hover to the port side of the aircraft or er, to the carrier. Uh, settle in, get your get your clearance from the carrier, and uh, then slew to the right. Starting to go backwards a little bit, so have to concentrate here. a bit, so I am clear of the fantail. That's pretty good. I'm using the mouse now for a gentle hover, and I'll just move off to the right. Usually when I'm trying to do this, I uh, move my view around from forward to the side. Move to the side to make sure that I'm not going to crash into anything. And I'm just slowly moving the mouse around so that I drift to the right. And I'm slowly letting off the throttle. Or really, I'm uh, reducing collective. And a little bit of uh, input from the pedals to line up. And reduce, keep the collective reduced, and I should slowly come in for a nice soft landing. And that's it. Turn off the engines here. Or if I choose to, I could taxi. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, short video. I'm not sure uh, if it was helpful or not, but uh, if it was, please uh, feel free to leave a comment and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks very much. This is Faint, signing off.